Oh, that is nice. What an incredibly good feeling iron that is. It's going to be in the bunker left. Yes, straight into it. That's incredible. And that's the feel off that one. It surprises me a little bit just as how good that is. That could be the surprise of the bunch. The feel at the MB is, uh, is pure. That's the word I'm going to give you, pure. I've got to admit, I keep reaching for it. Love the looks and uh, the feel, like I said, incredible. It's fair to say this could have been the easiest review I have ever done because let's be honest, it could just finish exactly right here and now, surely. Everybody is sold just based on looks alone, right? This is the nicest set sets of irons that TaylorMade have ever produced. And quite possibly the best looking sets of irons that are on the marketplace right now. That's how high I regard these clubs in terms of aesthetics. But we all know clubs are not bought on looks alone, or are they? Maybe sometimes they are, but we need to analyze performance and that's what I'm here to do. So I have taken these golf clubs out on the golf course, all three sets. I've got a nine iron, a seven iron, and a five iron in each of the three sets. And I've also collected dry ball data. I have hit a lot of golf balls before. I think I'm in a position to pass on an opinion as to uh, as to how I rate these golf clubs. Now I would normally start with that uh, out on the course, but I'm going to start with dry ball data because this was the interesting bit for me. There is very slight differences in the loft of each of these irons uh, sets, a very minimal difference. And as you would expect, the MB being the classic blade is the weakest in terms of loft and the P770 is the strongest. But in terms of dry ball data, there wasn't massive amounts to separate them. So that one degree of difference or two degrees from P770 down to MB wasn't huge in terms of overall carry distance. Uh, and the differences and the variables that you can see, and I'm gonna go through each one of them, are very much down to the spin rate that was obtained through each and slightly different launch angles. And that's dry ball data done. I ain't gonna complicate things. They performed, I think, first of all, like, in terms of my opinion on the MB's performance in terms of dry ball data, incredible in terms of how it performed up against the P770. I was expecting to see bigger gaps, but that's dry ball data. So next up, it is out on the golf course. And what I wanted to see, first of all, I've got, don't forget, five iron, uh, seven iron, nine iron. And what I'm looking for is, first of all, are the ball flight characteristics the same as what we've seen in dry ball data? And yes, they were uh, very much as you'd expect them to be. Um, in terms of the MB for me, maybe that spin number was a little bit high and it just, again, playing in sort of links conditions, it just sort of hovered a little bit more. P770 seemed to sort of uh, be a bit more penetrated in terms of the ball flight, even though the launch angle uh, was slightly higher in the respective clubs. You then get the, down to this, back to this aesthetics and how they look at a dress. And they've, they've each got a reasonably thin top line. Again, MB being the thinnest of those three and the P770, it starts to get a little bit thicker. Now, what I wanna do in this video is talk about this range of clubs as a range of clubs, as the P series of clubs. I'm then gonna break these down into individual reviews. So I'll pay much more attention to the specific, specifics of each one. What I particularly like about the three irons in this piece series is the ability to blend sets and make combination sets. And I think that's gonna be a big deal moving forward. It's always been the sort of the logical scenario 
So again, maybe looking at P770s and P790s in those longer irons and combining them with sort of things that produce a bit more feel down that lower end and shorter end of the bag. The difficulties I've had, and I've done that, don't forget, um, in the past is that they really do look like two very different golf clubs that you've got sat in the bag and at address again noticeably different when you put one club as opposed to the other and that's the thing that is a, was a, always a slight negative what they've done incredibly well here is there is minimal offset in each of these three club sets unnoticeable as far as i'm concerned and again that blend of the top line is everything you want it to be so in that four and five iron if you were maybe to go down the p770 route you'd be more than happy to see that blend into even down to these mbs in the shorter iron so i think what you'll see a lot of in this particular um launch from taylor made is a lot of reference made to the combo sets i think that's going to be a big big deal and i think it's like i said for most golfers the logical scenario but performance back out on the course. I had the regular stuff, five irons, seven irons. Uh, you'll see here, again, I switched up to some uh, short chip and runs. Some of these are played with five, uh, with seven iron. Some of these are played with nine iron. The feel out of all three is incredibly good. When you put all three together, you start to see a noticeable difference between the P770 and the MB. I would say the MB is, is a, a pure forge club. The 770 is forged face with speed foam. It's definitely, like I said, when you put them head to head, literally shot after shot, slightly more clickier from a P770. And for me, the feeling out the MB and of the MC as well, which I've not really paid much reference to, it sits in the middle, was absolute pure in terms of its feel. Great control, really, it, honestly, I can't stress enough how good these clubs performed out there on the golf course. Dry ball data, yeah, it's needed, but I'm always all about what happens out on the course. And they were fantastic. Don't forget, you'll see some where these balls end up. They, they don't hit everything straight. That's down to me. And as you know, average golfer, I'm not in everything straight down the, uh, the pipe all the time. But when you got these things right, they were so, so good. Again, for the people, the, the sort of the spin obsessed of you out there, I love this position that you see on the 12th. Uh, this is um, sort of 110 yards in. It's playing uh, not a great deal of wind on this occasion, but it's Lynx Golf. These, these greens are firm, and we're playing in what is half a nine iron. Half a nine iron, we're not gonna get a great deal of spin on it, but just look how this ball reacts on the green. It's reacted perfectly, and all three of those, are they played with each different club. There's very little to split them in terms of the performance and be able to uh, grip on the green. Don't forget, half a nine iron, not the easiest shot to obtain spin on, especially on that firm and fast Lynx green. So again, ticking another box there, as did all the dry ball data. I mean, I honestly think that TaylorMade have brought out, they bring out a lot of product. They're often criticized for it. And I think that sometimes maybe it is a bit too much that comes out but i think but because there's never major differences but i think what they've done here is the p the, the tiger woods iron for me was the standout blade iron in the last couple of years it was unbelievably good on the eye but it was also very surprising on how easy it was forgiving whatever you want to whatever word you want to use for such a compact iron and what they've done that if they've certainly uh, produced this MB version on the back of that. And again, pure in terms of feel, so compact, minimal offset. You then go to the MC and I mentioned it could be the surprise product. Visibly for me, or visually rather for me, it's my least favorite out of the three irons that have been uh, released. However, in terms of performance, as soon as I started hitting it, again, I was so shocked in terms of the performance. The biggest deal was both in the MB and the MC, how forgiving they were, how easy they were to use as an eight handicap golfer, never gonna strike the ball pure every time, but the consistency out of it and the amount of, I, I just didn't do a great deal wrong with either of them, to be honest with you. And the P770 did what I expected it to do. I can't really separate it. I just think it's a better version. So when I say better, if you've got P790s and the only compromise that you made was the size and bulk. So you're a bit of a player, you want a bit of help from P790s, that's where you went there. We have now got an option on the table in the P770, which is same in terms of performance from what I can see, 
but that more compact uh, head size and I know from uh, somebody who's using these already and he'll be on the channel discussing his thoughts on these very very shortly p790 user uh, Lewis Johnson he's tried the p770s absolutely loves them so what I'm going to do I'm going to leave it there because for me that's my first overview of all three products what I'm going to do moving forward is I'm going to get an opinion of Lewis is going to come down. We're going to get out there on the golf course. I'm going to break these down, each of them, into his opinion and mine on a, on a specific video on each of these irons because they certainly deserve a bit more attention. Stunning to look at. Price point, I think, is around £1,300 in terms of a seven set iron. That's RRP. Now, I never know what these are going to sell at, so don't get me wrong. I've done this in the past where I tell you what the RRP is. That's not necessarily what they're going to hit the shelves at. So it's 1300 quid RRP. What they end up selling for, I do not know. Down to a winner. I swear to God, these will be big sellers. I know the P790 was a massive seller for TaylorMade, and I can't say the P770 will be a massive seller. And the, the MBs on the shelf, I seen pictures of these things that were leaked on Instagram in people's bags, and, uh, and they look they look great. But believe me, in the flesh, they've done them no justice. The photos that have come out so far, these things are absolutely stunning, really stunning. Anyway. That's me done. As ever, thank you for watching. Give me your comments down below. It's um, we've tried. It's been tried and tested in every way that I can to give you the um, to, to give a proper evaluation of this product in the best way as I can. Right. Thanks for watching. I think that's about as excitable as I get over a set of irons. They're stunning. I've used that word quite a lot. I'll see you all soon. Hit that subscribe button, like all them other groveling messages. Do all of that, and uh, I'll see you all soon.